The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Adam. Every year, Apple produces new iPhones for the world to gush over. And every year, there's some big change that's going to shake up the entire lineup, although some changes last longer than others. 3D Touch. But uh, the big change this year is something called MagSafe. So in this video, I'm challenging myself to make a MagSafe battery pack that resembles and functions like something Apple would actually produce. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. When MagSafe was announced, it was primarily to solve one problem. When you wirelessly charge your smartphone, the coils in the phone and in the charger need to align almost perfectly to deliver an effective charge. However, this doesn't always happen. And if the coils aren't aligned, the phone either charges really slow or it just doesn't charge at all. So in response, Apple created MagSafe, which is just essentially a ring of magnets that goes around a phone and on a charger to effectively align the magnets and therefore delivering an effective charge. MagSafe or wireless charging in general is widely regarded as pretty inefficient, but I can't help admitting that at least how Apple designed it, it's pretty cool. So since my phone was around four years old and it had several non-functioning keys, I went out and purchased one of the new phones. And just to try it out, I also purchased MagSafe and it's pretty neat. There is something kind of cool about knowing that your phone is charging without actually using a connector. And while Apple has only released some accessories in a MagSafe charger, I wouldn't really put it past them to create a MagSafe battery pack, primarily because Apple has already made battery cases for older phones. Today, I want to create a MagSafe battery pack that resembles and functions like something Apple might actually produce. Because right now, there are some third-party alternatives, but most of them have the same kind of rectangular look that um, other battery packs have, but I'm assuming they just have magnets in them. None of them really look like the MagSafe charger that kind of looks like a hockey puck. I've done some of the math here comparing um, the, big, the main battery that we're using in the project to um, Apple's smallest battery and the biggest battery they're um, using on the new iPhones. So, uh, you know, our current LiPo is 3.7 volts, 2 amps, so that's 7.4 watts. Uh, on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it has 3.83 uh, volts, 3.69 amps, so it has 14.13 um, watts. So that's a big battery. And then um, their smallest one is the iPhone 12 mini, or the smallest iPhone that um, has MagSafe, and uh, 3.85 volts, uh, 2.23 amps, and then 8.57 watts. So if we were not doing any wireless charging, um, this would be really effective where like that battery will not quite um, uh, charge the entire battery, but it'll be pretty close between that and that. But uh, since Qi wireless charging, you know, it does lose um, power from heat and in, in creating that uh, electric magnetic field. Um, there's not really a set percentage that is lost. Um, a lot of the research I've seen is around 30%, but I've seen it usually fluctuates. But I just done 30% just to kind of show um, what we can expect, like to charge your phone from 0%. But I know it's kind of iffy, especially on these iPhones, because um, Apple now has them set where they like drain um, whatever power source it's taking like a lot from like zero to 40% or zero to 50% and then it slows down charging. So it's kind of hard to calculate this like effectively, but you know, this is kind of the average. So if this was just, you know, 30% lost from um, those wattages, you can expect to uh, charge your phone around 38, 36% on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And then on the iPhone 12 mini, we can expect to charge our phone around 60%. This project has a pretty simple schematic. To start off, any project that I use LiPo batteries, I try to incorporate some kind of charging circuitry. And since I knew and I'd used boards like the Adafruit Power Boost that offer battery protection and charging, I didn't see the need to create my own PCB. The Adafruit Power Boost board I'm using outputs one amp. So this definitely is not going to be fast charging. This project wasn't to create the most efficient battery for an iPhone. If it was, I would definitely not be using Qi wireless charging because you can expect a loss from 30% or more just due to heat and creating the magnetic field. 
And since Qi wireless charging is currently uh, pretty much the universal for all wireless charging applications, there are lots of pre-made PCBs that offer all the components needed to create an oscillating magnetic field found in all wireless chargers. So I picked up one of these Qi wireless charging boards and coils. Lastly, I picked up a large lithium polymer battery. And first I was thinking, huh, I could just use two of these really thin batteries that have 1200 milliamps and I could put them in parallel, therefore giving 2400 milliamps, which, have a good, which would have a good bit of power. Um, however, since I wanted this to resemble um, Apple's charger, I needed to keep roughly the same diameter as the original as any larger might be wider than most of the other phones that have MagSafe. So I ended up looking through some of my component drawers and found a lithium polymer battery from an older project. It also has 3.7 volts, but it only has 2000 milliamps, which is less power than the 2400 milliamps from the other two batteries, but it should still have enough power to adequately charge the phone. And it has almost the same size as the original MagSafe charger. And now, on to prototyping. In my first design, I designed and printed several plastic cases that resembled the MagSafe charger. And after that, I began brainstorming what the best route would be to attach the battery to the phone. And I first picked up some pretty thick sheet metal from the hardware store that was magnetic. And I was kind of guessing, uh, well I, didn't, I wasn't sure what kind of metal it was, even the hardware store, they weren't even sure what it was. I'm assuming it's possibly stainless steel that's been galvanized, which is why it's magnetic. But um, I'm really not sure, but it is quite thick. And it did stick to my phone, but it also left this very nice scar on my phone case because I did not trim off the sharp edge, but that's my fault. Um, <laughs> and uh, once I placed it on the other side of the plastic, however, um, I realized it's definitely not going to be strong enough to hold the plastic mount, let alone the battery and circuit boards. And I found some really small magnets online that weren't particularly strong, like they are advertised as not strong magnets. Um, however, I think they are so small that I think enough in place will hold the battery coil and circuitry. When I was designing a mount for all the magnets, I placed a few magnets on my phone and measured the distance between them so I could recreate the magnet arrangement. And I did so in pairs because on every new iPhone, there are two magnetic rings with opposite polarization. And in this prototype, I tried um, 10 pairs or 20 magnets total, and this seemed to work well before I placed any other components on. And I cannot stress the immediate satisfaction that occurred when the mount um, actually locked into place on the phone with magnets. Like when it was perfectly aligned, oh, it was so satisfying. So, mission accomplished? Nope. <laughs> um, other than uh, one of the other problems, which are the plastic walls, they're kind of thick. Um, the other problem are with the only 20 magnets. Um, as soon as I put any other weight um, with the battery or even a circuit board, the mount would fall off the phone um, very easily. So I think that's just the problem with the 20 magnets. So on prototype two, we need to address that. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! In this design, I decided to go back to my 3D model and adjust the array um, so instead of having 10 items, I have 30. So I've added a, a good bit more magnets because the magnets, again, were just not strong enough before. So instead of having 10 pairs or 20 magnets total, I now have 30 pairs or 60 magnets total. And um, I have to say, after I mounted all the magnets and placed the mount back on my phone, it was, again, incredibly satisfying but even better than before. Um, in the previous version, you know, the mount held, but it was nowhere near the strength of the original Apple um, MagSafe charger. Um, but in this version, the strength is either the same, if not stronger than the original, which that was just an incredibly um, awesome sign that this will actually work. <laughs> um, I then just taped all the components together um, just onto the mount, just so I can see if the mount uh, actually stays on my phone. And sure enough, I didn't have any problems with it staying on my phone. 
So this is definitely the best route to go. And the next aspect I was really um, looking forward to in this project was incorporating aluminum into the design. Because, you know, Apple has a really long history of incorporating aluminum into their products. From old iPhones to MacBooks to even, you know, the current MagSafe charger. They're all made out of aluminum. Because, you know, Apple's kind of shown that, hey, you can make aluminum look pretty sleek and even kind of futuristic looking. So I kind of want to bring that to this project. So I decided I wanted to keep a plastic mount definitely where the magnets are housed. Because I just can't even imagine making that out of aluminum. That would have to be, like, welded. Something crazy that I just don't know how to do. So um, that's just not a good idea for this project. Um, but I actually decided to make the walls out of aluminum because A, that really fixes my PLA wall issue where they're not super strong and they're also pretty thick so they're taking up more space. Aluminum fixes both of those problems because aluminum is stronger than the PLA plastic I'm using and it's thinner. So I actually have more room to house all the electronics and the battery. I first thought I was gonna cut the aluminum with um, some heavy duty nippers because why not? Um, but that just was not a good idea. I still have the original version right here. And I think this is like my trim version. This was a while ago because this is not as bad as I remember. I think I must have like cut off the really sharp bits because, you know, they are hazardous. But um, this just turned out really poorly. And I did. I tried this several times. And I could just never get a, um, a cut that I was pleased with. So I ended up going with the, the harder option, but it turned out so much better which was designing it in AutoCAD and then um, exporting it and cutting it out on the X-Carve. And this gave it such a professional look and I really like this option because A, it can be replicated. So if anyone who has a X-Carve or a CNC could just make this if they wanted to. But uh, also it's just like, it's something a, a company would do. <laughs> I don't know many companies that uh, have like hand cut sheet metal on their products. So this looked so much more professional and I loved it, and it made the product. I mean, it made the final product just look amazing. Um, but I mean, I was pleased that yes, I did go through more work to design this and cut it out on the X carve, so it took out a lot more time than if I just did it, you know, by hand. But it turned out so well, and I was very impressed by the X carve because I did not think the X carve I have available um, was strong enough to cut through aluminum, even if it's very thin aluminum like this. But um, I was very impressed that it was. So I was impressed. <laughs> and the last concern I had was connecting the battery. And, it, and I initially thought, um, I don't know, why not just use the lightning connector PCB so it could, you know, use the same charging cable as iPhones. But um, little did I know that lightning, um, at least connectors, are proprietary, which I should have remembered. But yeah, Apple likes to patent things. Um, but yeah, so lightning uh, connectors are um, proprietary, so they are pretty hard to find on PCBs. So that's why, um, after some more research, I think USB-C would be a really good option. Um, I first just thought of the idea, why don't I just make the most Apple thing, or the most, I mean, maybe not Apple, but like just the most like silly option would be a wirelessly charging, or I'm sorry, a wirelessly charged um, battery that can wirelessly charge your iPhone. So the, that was an idea that I had at one point to um, you know have the battery be able to be wirelessly charged so that it could wirelessly charge the iPhone. But I just thought that was just overboard at that point, was just being silly. Um, so that's why I think USB-C is a really good option because um, those connectors and those PCBs are really easy to find, especially compared to the Lightning um, connector. So I think that's a really good option for this project. And now, let's solder everything up.
think this project turned out incredible. Like I am just so blown away by the, just the Apple look that I've accomplished and just the functionality. I mean, it works, it looks great. It actually charges with USB-C, which, you know, I, I soldered up. I was pretty pleased with that. But um, other than just the awesome look and it actually functions and I might use this in my daily use, all that is just wonderful. But I think the most important thing to take away from this is that it's just satisfying. <laughs> it locks on the phone. I can actually like hold it like this if I want to, or I could hold it like that, kind of like a pop socket. That's kind of maybe stretching it, but whatever I'm going to do with this, I'm just thrilled that it actually works and it holds onto the phone. It's just a fun thing. Um, it actually really just reminds me of something that Apple might produce. I would not be surprised in six months if Apple announces something like this. But um, if you've ever made an, like a knockoff Apple product or if you've made any accessories for your phone, let me know at the Element 14 community at element14.com presents. I'll see you next time.